again, we are going to talk about and perform experiment based on Le Chatelier's principle. Uh, what is Le Chatelier's principle? Le Chatelier's principle is a principle that applies to system at equilibrium. Now, when you look at the uh, the action at the equilibrium, there is like a double arrow, arrow that shows the reaction going forward and the reaction going reverse. That means your reaction is a reversible reaction. So for a reversible reaction, when the reaction reaches equilibrium, concentration of the reactant and product is going to stay constant. They don't have to be equal, but they would stay constant. Then, based on the Chateau's principle, if you apply any pressure to the system at equilibrium, equilibrium or the reaction is going to shift to form more product or to form more reactant depends on the change that you are applying to this reaction. Then it will uh, change the concentration of product and reactant both in a way that it reaches back to equilibrium we had before. There's equilibrium constant, the K value, which is concentration of product over concentration of reactant raised to the power of coefficient in a reaction. And I will have more explanation in the pre-lab uh, discussion video for you uh, showing actual reaction. But here we want to know what are the reactants, what are the products and what we are adding, is it going to affect the concentration of reactants or, uh, or product? And we are looking for changes. For the first reaction, which we have the cobalt uh, chloride, we are going to add that to a test tube. Uh, based on the procedure, we're asking to add um, 10 drops of it into a um, test tube. So we add just 10 drops of uh, cobalt chloride. And I want you to note the color. The color for this is the uh, white background, which are better or black one, but we are looking for red color or pink color, basically. If you can see the color, record the color as the pink uh, color, then uh, we are going to add HCl based on the procedure. When we are adding drops of HCl, basically in the balance equation, Cl minus is on the reactant side. So the sh reaction should go to the product. So I'm going to add the HCl in the tube until the color change happens. added the, the HCl drop by drop till the color change happened. Again, I'm going to use the white background for you to see that the color change from pink color going to a uh, blue color. At least you could see it, that it's not a pink color anymore. And again, every time you want to uh, use this observation and analyze the, the changes, you have to refer to the balance equation. In the balance equation, your reactant is cobalt with water and the product side is cobalt with chlorine. So if you increase the concentration of the, the water by adding water, which is the procedure of the next step, just going to add it one drop at a time until we see the color change. When we add more water, then the solution is going to change back to pink color. This is not magic. What it is, is based on Le Chatelier's principle, the reaction shifted to the reactant side. And on the reactant side, we had the pink color. I hope you can see the pink color. I'm also holding against white background again to see that pink color. When you look at this reaction, this reaction is an endothermic reaction. What it means, endothermic, means that it requires heat for it to, uh, to go from the uh, reactant to the product side. So if I place this in a hot water bath, okay, if I place this in a hot water bath, we apply uh, heat. The heat can change the reaction going from the reactant side to product side. How do we know it's a product side? Because the product is going to be blue color. So if we see appearance of a blue color or disappearance of the pink color, that means the reaction has shifted to right 
or formation of more uh, products. So I want you to, to uh, look, if you can't see the, the, the hot water bath with the test tube in there, the color is changing or it keeps changing. And I'm going to wait until it changes like significantly. So it's not pink color before I bring it out because when I bring it out, it's going to cool down and it could go reverse. Uh, so at least to hold it for you to see it focus, see what is the, the um, color change. So now the pink color disappeared. It went to uh, blue color again. And the blue color means it's formation of the the product. I explained the first reaction a little bit more detail, uh, giving you a hint the reaction is going to reactant site or if it's going to product site. For the other reactions, because you are basically doing the experiment, I'm acting as your lab partner, I'm doing the experiment, you're recording the observation, you should record the observation carefully and analyze it and say, what, what is actually happening if the reaction is going from the uh, reactant to product side, which is shift to right, or going from product to reactant side, shifting to the left side. And you would see that only by the color change. So if it's the color of the uh, reaction is changing or not. Okay, the next reaction that we have is the reaction of acidic acid. Uh, and to the acidic acid, we are going to add HCl and we are going to add uh, sodium hydroxide and determine the pH. The procedure given to you is asking this reaction to be done in a uh, test tube and we use the universal indicator to determine the pH. Because I had the, I was lucky enough to have the pH meter here and I can use the pH meter so I'm doing the experiment in a uh, beaker instead because if I do the experiment in a test tube, it does not uh, fit. The pH meter doesn't fit in the, in the uh, test tube. So I would do this experiment in, um, in a beaker. And I'm going to add um, enough of acidic acid that I can immerse actually the pH meter inside the, inside the acidic acid. So I'm just following the, the procedure here, adding the acidic acid to, the, to both beakers, and then uh, finding the value for pH. To find the value for pH, I'm using a pH meter. So my pH meter now is this device, and I will, I will give you a close up um, or read the number for you. It's placed in a pH of seven buffer to standardize. So I standardize this. So it's calibrated now to make sure that it's showing the proper value for a pH. To this solution, it's uh, if I make the, the solution mixed with the salt of the acid, I'm basically making buffer solution. So acid, plus the salt of that weak acid, it makes a buffer solution. What is unique about buffer solution is that in a buffer solution, it basically, it resists, it has higher resistance to our change in pH. So if I add some acid or some base to it, the pH is expected not to change. And you can explain that based on the reaction of the buffer. Of course, you are going to refer to the lab manual and use the lab manual for this, um, uh, for the changes. So we can uh, now dissolve this. Okay, after I mix the um, acidic acid with the sodium acetate, I basically have a buffer solution in both beaker one. Um, which I'm going to measure the pH, and I want you to record the pH. Okay, record the pH. This is the pH of the buffer solution. And it's expected to be the same for the, for test tube two, or for beaker two in this case. But, 
since I made the solution separately, I want you to record the pH. This is the pH for, um, this is the pH for test tube two, okay? Test tube slash beaker two. Okay. Now, to test tube one, I'm adding sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to add basically uh, the manual says two drops, but that was for only 20 drops of the, the acidic acid. Here, I'm just going to add a few drops of the sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, and normally it would increase the pH of the solution significantly. But since it's a buffer solution, the equilibrium is going to shift, but in a way that it would maintain the uh, pH. So the pH is not changing significantly. So this is pH for the buffer solution, test tube one after adding uh, sodium hydroxide. Now to the test tube two or beaker two, I'm going to just going to leave it in the in a buffer in between reactions so the cell does not dry. So I'm adding the HCl. HCl has lower concentration, so I'm going to add more HCl, uh, about 20 drops of the HCl. Adding, and I want to measure the pH. After adding the HCl, just use my pH meter to stir. And here is the pH after adding HCl. So you can record the pH after adding HCl in test tube two slash beaker two, and that's for the pH meter. Okay. Okay, I just want to make sure that you, uh, when you are recording the number for the pH, the pH should be around four for acidic acid buffer solution that we make with acidic acid and salt, because two numbers were showing on the pH meter. I don't want you to use the like 23. The scale for the pH, as one of my smart students says, is between zero and 14, and you should not get it, but just to make sure that is. Uh, uh, the, it should be around four, but you get the exact number from the pH meter that I hold you um, against the camera. Um, now we are moving to the next experiment. In the next experiment, we have potassium chromate. Based on the procedure, I'm adding three milliliters of potassium chromate in a um, test tube. Then, you record the number a yellow color, a bright yellow color um, for the original potassium chromate solution. Then we are adding uh, drops or two drops of the uh, nitric acid, three molar nitric acid, and looking for the, for the color change. Now, I want you to record your observation. Look for the color change. This color, it's not yellow anymore because I can hold this next to it for you to see it. There is the color change right there. Um, is an orange color, going from yellow color to the orange color. And uh, your explanation, it should be based on how the reaction shifts. Is it shifting to the right or to the left? Is it making more product or is making more of the, of the reactant? So please refer to the chemical reaction for that. Now we are adding sodium hydroxide. When we add sodium hydroxide, basically it should reverse the action we had before. It should neutralize the acid that I added. And then uh, when it neutralizes the acid, uh, it should go back basically to the original yellow color that we had, but we don't say it in the lab. We always do the experiment and we record our observation based on the evidences that we actually can measure or can see in the lab. Now it went back to the original color because the added acid was neutralized by adding sodium hydroxide. That was the 
experiment today. Okay, for the next reaction, I already made here the iron three thiocyanate by mixing iron chloride and potassium thiocyanate. So I already made this solution and I'm going to add uh, two milliliters in each of the four test tubes. And what I normally do, I measure the two milliliter for one of the test tubes. And then I add to the test tube. This is my measured one. I hold the test tube next to the others. This is the trick that I use next to the others. And I add enough to make the same level as the first test tube. So you can call anything you like, being smart or being lazy, but it's not quantitative analysis, a qualitative analysis. So I get approximately same level of the liquid and all four test tubes. The blank one, which is just for the color is used, is, is a little bit more than what it should be. So I take some out. That's a promise that would be almost the same. One, it would be our blank. So I'm not going to add anything to the, to the one and I will use it to compare um, what is going to happen. To test tube number two, I'm adding, what are we adding to test tube number two? We are adding ferric chloride. So I have the ferric chloride here, I'm adding to test tube number two. Is ferric chloride one of the reactants? Is one of the products? What is it? So you are going to see the color change after adding 10 drops of the, of the um, ferric chloride. So I'm adding ferric chloride to test tube number two and is on the left side. Um, you can record your observation. To test tube number three, now, I still have the one for the blank. To the test tube number three, I'm adding potassium thiocyanate. And looking for the result for the 10 drops. So if it is the reactant still is going to be the same. So I can hold it against like a white background, maybe you can see it better. So that's the blank, I'm holding the blank. And this is after adding the potassium thiocyanate. Two, so both of them, if you notice, both of them, they were reactant that were added. So I, I hold the test tube one as the comparison, as my reference. And to the last test tube, I'm adding silver nitrate. When you work with silver nitrate, you have to be very careful because when you, if you touch it, sometimes I do, it leaves like black stain in your, on your skin and it doesn't go away. It takes about um, three weeks for it to go away. And sometimes the students, they call me after and they come and say, what happened? Um, so to my skin. So they worry about more about what happened to their skin. I say, don't worry, in three weeks it will be fine. It will, it will peel off. Your skin peel off and it's going to be okay. What is happening here? The silver ion, it precipitates the um, one of one of the reactants or products. So you look at the chemical reactions to answer that. But for now, just record your observation. The red color, the reddish color that is coming from iron three. Um, thiocyanate is disappearing and is getting more of the yellow um, color. This is the last ex last reaction of the of the experiment for the Le Chatelier's principle. Please do not just say goes to left or right. Refer to the chemical reaction and say if the reactants are favored or products are favored, and what is the evidence that would show if the reactant is favored or the product is uh, favored. Thank you.